in the process of removing the old outside light. Um, the, the screws that hold the bracket onto the wall are totally rusted. And I've just rounded them off, so I'm just, I'm just going to quickly drill them out. Right, there's the offending article. And I just drilled that screws out. Um, the screws holding that on, just drilled them out. So I've got a new bracket on here now. I need a junction box here, and then we're wiring the light above. Be fine. Right guys, that's the new LED light finished. Um, that's all. Not really much to show you there. It's a new LED, so that'll light up the, the back garden now. There's an extra light. Um, the cable loose going through the extractor fan vent. <laughs> and it's a bit neater. Um, there's the LED we've just put in just now. So. That's it. Okay, it was just about to uh, link up my jet wash to the outside tap, and here's the problem. Uh, it was isolated from the inside, and now I think I know the reason why. Um, so I'm actually going to have to email the property agent and see if she wants a new outside tap for here. Okay, so the wet water's isolated. Trusty Nipex Cobras. Uh, this one's already off. I'll get this one off. It's just compression fittings. Take the tap off. I'll take the tap off out from the wall and get all this disassembled. Okay, so I've got the tap off now, so hopefully, it, yeah, this pulls off. And it out. And I don't know if you can see the problem there. Uh, there's a, I'll take this inside actually. Yeah, so that's a pipe out. Um, again, this was a bit unexpected, I didn't expect this. Uh, but you can see the burst there. This happens all too often. I get called out to a lot of these types of jobs as well. Yeah, basically caused by people leaving water and not draining the outside tap uh, before the winter time. Obviously, the winter comes along in Scotland. The water, any water that's left in the pipe, expands and it freezes. And here's the end result. Nice big split there. Just a quick one. Um, this is the old bit of pipe we were showing you. It's burst. Get these off and the olives are obviously crimped on, so what I use a lot of the time is these, uh, which is the olive remover. Um, so just a little pipe. Give it a squeeze, and it just, you can see that, it cuts the olive, and you can slip that off without. You know, the pipe's actually undamaged, so it allows us to get the original fittings off now. Other side. Same again, give it one. <coughs> cut it off. Fitting off, so. Here we go, that's the, the bin. Here's a new bit I've just done, so let's get these fittings on. A couple of new olives. Uh, compound, uh, compound paste. I'm gonna get it all rigged up in a minute. Hopefully, it should be working again. And I'll be able to use my jet washer at the back. <coughs> See, I'm just connecting the top before I put this onto the wall. Safe to do it when it's in position. Let's see this. Tightened up now the Nipex Cobras and I'll get ready to go back in position. Okay, so here's the isolation valve for the tap outside and I'll just turn it on now. That's it really easy, just move the screw so it's running in the direction of the flow. And if you turn that across the way it cuts off the flow. So that's the water open now. Can't hear any hissing or anything, so hopefully it's okay. Check. Fine, so all I've done there is replace this bit of pipe, as I showed you. Yeah, obviously I need to put a new bit of insulation on here. Um, I don't have any with me, so I'll take some tomorrow. It's basically just a, a foam insulation that you put around pipes. Uh, a couple of tie wraps and that'll, that'll do it. 
just helps insulate it. But to be honest, in the winter time, uh, I never advise having water in the pipe anyway. Always isolate it like I showed you under the sink. And then you've got a drain cock here to drain the pipe. Uh, and that and that will never burst again, you know, if you, if you leave it empty during the winter months. So anyway, I'll, I'll give the owner a lecture um, once I speak to her. Now we can get the, get the jet wash attached and start, start tacking this mess here. Yeah, quick overview of the difference. Um, <coughs> it looks better once it's all bone dry. Obviously, we'll have to get kiln dried sand uh, and put it all in the joints. I think I'll try and level off that slab as well. It's sticking up. Um, obviously, we'll still got to weed kill all the, the chuckies, tidy up all this edge here. But it should be a big improvement once we've done it. I'm going to obviously jet wash it again. I'll just let this dry off tonight. I'll give it another power wash tomorrow. Um, it's really boggy up in that corner, really wet, so we need to let all that dries off, sweep all the rubbish away and give it a good wash again tomorrow. That should do it. Yeah, so I just used the Karcher K7, which is probably a top of the range uh, home use model. Um, I don't have any industrial pressure washers or anything, this is the main thing I use. Uh, so basically just with the wand and the, the dirt blaster nozzle. Yeah, that does the job. Right guys, uh, just a day of problems today. <laughs> uh, it's usually the case with these types of jobs. Um, but if you remember from the first video, if you've watched it, um, these wardrobe doors are getting replaced. This one's all smashed, the frame's all damaged and everything. So I measured them the other day, I was on the internet last night, uh, just researching to see if I can get the doors, just to see if they were available. Uh, first of all, I wouldn't get them from the internet, I would get them from a supplier. Uh, but they, they're a non-standard size, so it's really difficult to get them. You'd actually have to get these made to order. Um, I think they're 1950 in height, height-wise. Uh, standard doors are about you know, 2 metres, 200 roughly. Um, so to get these made, it would cost a fortune. Well, not a fortune, but you're probably looking at about £400 to get these made. Uh, as opposed to £100 if we can get the standard ones. So. I think what I'm going to do here is, I think I'll take these out and reline this door. Um, so take all this trim off, uh, take the framing out at the top and, and build it up uh, to give us a, and then, and then that way we can build, get the standard sized doors. Yeah, it maybe seems like a lot of work, but it's not a few weeks, it's quite simple to do. Um, I'd rather do that, I think, get the standard sized doors. Yeah, we're decorating in here anyway, so get it all decorated once it's done, fit the new standard doors. The problem with made to order doors as well with this size, you know, they're really expensive, but it's a lead time. Um, I think from my initial, you know, look that I had on the internet, it was you know, looking at three to four weeks, you know, to wait and get in the doors. You know, I just can't wait that long. This job needs to be finished before then. Um, so it saved me coming back at a later date and then dealing with all this. Uh, I'd rather get done within the next week or two. Yeah, that's it. That's the decision made anyway. Um, I tend not to dwell on things, I just make a decision and do it. Uh, so I'll get these doors ordered, I'll get the necessary wood that I need. Uh, it's just um, yeah, it's not an unusual there, it's just a normal bit of framing, uh, a bit of trim. It's just standard trim there. 
that'll be easy enough to do. Okay, I'm just in the process of dismantling the bath. Um, first job, obviously, to take the panels off. I'm going to take the flooring out in a minute. Um, get the lot out. Uh, but I think if you remember, I don't know if you can see under there, but. You can see the wall at the back of there. We'll see it better when the bath comes out, but it shows the importance of uh, silicon sealing the, the bath. Uh, all that's caused that is the, the silicon seal. Obviously, water running down from the shower, running down the wall. Uh, there hasn't been a good seal there. It's just me coming straight down the side of the bath. Uh, you can see the damage under there. And this actually went right through to the bedroom, which is behind that wall. It's a bit of skirting board that we replaced. And then I'll have to have a close look at this floor when I take the bath out, because that might need, I may need to replace that. It's just showing you what can happen. Yeah, I'm just looking at this uh, basin as well. I think what I'm going to do, it wasn't originally, I was going to do like for like replacement. I think I might put a, a mammy unit in here. This is just a standard 600 width, so we have a 600 uh, vanity unit uh, in here. It should be quite neat. And yeah, I think that's what we'll do. A white vanity unit, white bath, and a bit of flooring damage. It should be all tired neatly. Right, guys, we're just in the process of getting the, the bathroom basin out. I'm just disconnecting the taps here. Well, I've done that already. I'm just using my little backhoe spanner. It's the easiest thing I can get to get in. Yeah, access isn't too bad here, so it wasn't a problem getting the two pipes off. There's two retaining screws here now, <coughs> holding the basin against the wall. So I'm just using my wee 10.8 DeWalt with an extension. Get those screws out and get this out now. Having one of those days today, uh, obviously cut the, no I didn't, I didn't cut the silicon, um, I just pulled the basin off and here's what's happened. <sighs> it's just going to be one of those days, um, I think what I'll do, I'll just take this tile off instead of painting these, I'll just get a, uh, just stand like the 200 by 100 rectangle tiles, I'll use the four white tiles and put them on. Once I've got the bath from the, the new basin unit, I'm probably the meter anyway. Got a little chrome thrown around it or something, and then you can look at it better. That just shows you nothing goes to plan, is it? <laughs> There's a basin with a couple of tiles. I would have salvaged them, but this one um, decided I want to tip down and break, so anyway, it's no big deal. These things happen. As I say, I'll get a new unit in here, uh, we'll retile this all the time, I'll take new trim. Uh, new bathroom cabinet up there will be fine. Okay, I need to uh, isolate these pipes now. I think I'll probably just chuck them in a couple of isolation valves or something, just so we can get the water back on. Change of plan now, I'm just cutting the pipes, uh, giving them a clean up. I'm just going to chuck a couple of end caps on. Uh, so with these, you just place it on like that and push. Firm it down, you can feel it go right down. Uh, Down, turn the water back on uh, to make sure they're not leaking. Um, that's pretty much the area isolated. I'm going to put the water on now just to double check. Okay, so the water turned on in the bath. You can see the two caps there holding firm. So it's isolated. Oh, yeah, it's a couple of times just on this job. I've had to reach for the, the extension out of my Tech XL. Um, just shows you, um, I mean I've got my Tech MC, OTMC set up here, but there is still things that you miss. Um, so again, just situations like this, uh, they teach you to say, right, I'm going to need another, well, it's just as well buying another set of these, to be honest. You can get them stuck in the Tech XL. Um, that's what I've said before about experimenting with these bags. <laughs> there always seems to be something missing, you, know, you think you've, you're fully loaded and then you're missing something. Um, this is just a typical example. That's coming really handy, not uh, 
was taking the sink out downstairs and taking this uh, basin out just now. So then I'll purchase some way. Okay, just in the process of taking out the, the bathroom floor, floor. so just a uh, line on, so we'll just cut it to the utility knife. manageable sections and remove that. Um, I need to remove all this trim as well, just ready for the flooring. Mostly get the bath out. Um, I'm jumping about a bit today. I'm, I normally try and concentrate on one room at a time, but it's just the way things have worked out. I'm just sort of jumping about. Um, so I'll get this floor out. I don't think I'll get the bath out today. Um, take this out. Um, Get back downstairs and start loading some of this rubbish into the van. Right, floor's out. I'm just going to pop this trim off now while I'm here. Uh, this bit here as well. Let's just put the floor into neatly, going back and we're putting that down. This box and ends up, obviously, going to have to be cut at the side of the unit. Um, I'm not sure what I'm going to do there yet, but we'll figure that out when we come to it. Uh, That's me until I get the, the bath out and obviously a bit of clear space. Um, right guys, this is the, the patch if you remember from the extractor from the outside. I don't know if you can see that. Uh, but that's absolutely solid with the jet rock that we use. Um, so it just needs a couple of coats of finishing compound now. And with this size of patch I, I wouldn't use um, you know the scrim tape, the, the jointing tape, you don't really need it, I don't think you do. Uh, obviously my big long joints, we would use the scrim or the, the jointing tape. But for this now, I'm just going to skim right over it. The jip rock that I use here, it just does not shrink. Um, I've never had an issue with it anyway, with smaller sort of patches like this. So we'll sand this now. <coughs> now what's going to use, I've got a sanding kit here. This is just one of the DeWalt boxes, the DS300. Um, just another one of my boxes. Yeah, so I've got an orbital sander here with all the different grades. Uh, yeah, sanding pads, sorry. So, yeah, there's a full range there anyway. I don't think I'm going to use this for that patch, it's going to cause too much dust. Um, so I'll, just, I'll take one of the rougher pads here and just do it with my hand and then get a first coat over, over the patch and we'll see how we go. Um, this, Sander, I love this. Uh, I use it a lot for refinishing worktops. Um, I do a lot of that. Uh, like wooden worktops, you know, they need sanding, re-oiled, re-stained. It's a great bit of kit. Uh, but I noticed the Walt now do a cordless version, uh, an 18 volt version, so I think that could be on the tool list. Um, I don't know if any of you guys, if you're, if you're watching this, and any of you guys have got one of those, and you. Uh, you like it, can we leave a comment and let us know how it is? Yeah, it's just handy, I hate having corded tools. I've got very little corded tools, most of my things are cordless, so I think an 18 volt sander would be a good investment. Okay, we'll give us a sand by hand now and then I'll show you putting the finishing compound on. Hey guys, this is the finishing compound that I use, uh, Jip Rock Pro Mix Lite. Uh, I buy it in the large uh, tubs like this, I do use it quite a lot. Um, it's, it's just like butter, it goes on really well, so... First of all, I'll just use a small uh, filling knife here. So. Scoop like that. Apologies, I'm trying to do this one-handed and film at the same time. So. Right, so, slap it on. Stop it to concentrate what I was doing, but uh, I just use a filling knife like this just to this is basically just to apply it. It's not finishing it with this, it's just applying the get enough filler on the, on the area, and then I'll use a, a finishing knife. I'll show you. Yeah, so now I'll move on to a, a finishing blade. This is one by Marshalltown. Uh, I use these a lot, um, 
and basically just drag this down gently. Like so. I'm not looking for a finish at the moment, I'm just trying to fill all the little crevices and get it halfway near flush. I'll let that dry overnight. Um, when this dries, it's just so easy to sand. It's just it's lovely to work with. So that will dry nearly pure white uh, by tomorrow. Well, maybe not. It's freezing up here and there's no heating. Uh, so maybe a couple of days. But once it's dry, same process. We'll get a nice, good skin over the knife with the knife and taper it all out so you won't you won't notice it. The important thing here is to come way past the edges with the filler. So it'll probably come down somewhere here, you know, and just basically skim the whole wall. Not the whole wall, but the whole, no, a large area. Uh, we'll show you how that turns out once it's dried. Uh, sand it again, and then same process. Right, guys, I'm just in the process of um, measuring up this area here uh, to box it in. Um, but we'll see that in the next instalment. Uh, but as for now, uh, I'll, I'll put all these clips into a video. So this will be the second instalment uh, of this renovation. Uh, apologies, I'll have to put it in bite size sort of bits. Um, maybe 20, 30 minute uh, sections. Um, I'll do it with this one. Uh, if it gets a bit of interest, I'll, I'll start doing these um, more often. Uh, the first video seemed to be received okay, so we'll try the second one. Let's see if any, you guys are getting any value out of this at all. Uh, once again, um, if you enjoy the video, enjoy this type of content, uh, please subscribe to the channel. Uh, there'll be a lot, of, a lot more similar content to this. I am trying to improve things. Um, I mean, I just film with my phone, uh, and a stupid little mic which actually broke the other day, so I'm not using a mic even. Um, this is just an old iPhone, uh, so I'll try and get a, a better camera and better set up to produce, uh, up the quality of the videos. Uh, but thanks again, thanks as ever for watching guys. Uh, I'll put this one out and then there'll be another installment in a day or two's time, uh, just covering what I'm doing. Okay, cheers guys, thanks.